You may have seen the Kraken G12 GPU cooler and thought, that looks like an easy and cheap way to add some water cooling. But is it really gonna give you way better performance for the price? Or are you just adding it because it looks good? Well, let's throw one on the test bench and see what we've got here. Hey there, tech boys and girls. So after seeing the G12 about a thousand times on both Newegg and Amazon, I finally had to know if this actually was a reasonable option in increasing my GPU performance, as well as making the system a little bit quieter. Because stock fans can get loud. Now, obviously the performance is gonna be tied to the quality of the liquid cooling AIO that you install on the G12 mounting kit. So it can be a real pain to even just make sure you find one that definitely will fit. Um, just double check, triple check, make sure that you're getting one that does actually fit in the slot. <laughs> and I have two such coolers to try and tame this Asus Strix 1080 Ti. We've got the NZXT X62 280 millimeter and the EVGA CLC 120 millimeter. My understanding is that any AIO with this rounded base exactly, uh, it was really common a couple years ago, is gonna fit inside the G12. But anyways, I've already got all my benchmarks done with the stock cooler. So real quick, let's install the Kraken G12. The kit is gonna come with everything that you need to install to your GPU and AIO. We're first gonna install the included fan into the correct hole. Then I'm gonna remove my stock cooler and clean the GPU die, being very careful not to ruin it and cry for the rest of the week. Then remove the rest of the stock cooler components and clean it up. Install the G12 mounting brackets. Let's get the EVGA 120 millimeter on there because we're gonna start with testing it first. So to put the AIO onto the mounting bracket, you don't need any screws or anything. It's just gonna twist and lock into place on the open slot. So we're almost ready. We just need to add thermal paste and press it into place. Screw the plate to the mount we installed on the GPU. Just gonna do a little bit of cable management here and then we're gonna slot it onto the motherboard. And this paired with the G12, it is definitely one of the cheapest combinations. You should be able to get this or something else for about 70 bucks. So let's take this and compare the temps and performance next to the stock cooler. For the test bench today, as you saw, we have the Strix 1080 Ti, the Ryzen 7 1700X, 32 gigabytes of 3000 megahertz RAM, all on the ASRock X470 Gaming K4 Fatality motherboard. Okay, so I'm gonna switch the X62 from the CPU to the mounting kit, and I really wanna see if getting a high-end AIO that's really nice is gonna give a, a way better performance and uh, temperatures compared to what really is just the cheapest and worst AIO you can get. For the benchmarks I'm gonna to use to test temperatures and performance, we're gonna be using user benchmark, 3D mark, and 30 minutes of division two at 1440. For the benchmark numbers, I use the same overclock on all three of the coolers. So stock had an idle of 30 degrees, User benchmark hit 40 degrees with a top score of 171%. 3D mark hit 60 degrees with 46.30. 30 minutes of division two had a high of 54 degrees with an average frame rate of 89. For the EVGA 120 millimeter, the idle stayed the same at 30 degrees. On user benchmark, it dropped one degrees to 39 and the score was 165%. So for whatever reason, the GPU wasn't kicking in as hard and we lost 6% on the performance. On 3D Mark, we hit 46 degrees, which is 14 degrees less than on stock. And we lost a little bit of performance with a score of 4598. Then on Division 2, we hit 47 degrees with an average frame rate of 93, which was seven degrees cooler and we gained four frames per second average. So here the X62 surprised me with some really, really good numbers. Idle, it sat at 28 degrees. User Benchmark hit 34 degrees and 172%. 3D Mark at 46 degrees and a score of 4562, and Division 2 hit 39 degrees with a 94 frame per second average. So let's compare that to stock. We are two degrees down from the idle temperature, we're down six degrees in user benchmark, and we gained 1% performance increase. In 3D Mark, we dropped 14 degrees, and the performance did go down to 4562. And we're talking about a difference of one to two. Uh, let me get my calculator real quick. It's two divided by 4630. The difference is 1.5%, which is well within the margin of error to really just say this is about the same performance. Except with that 14 degrees, you're giving yourself a lot more headroom to push the card a little bit harder. 
And in Division 2, we dropped 15 degrees, and we went up 5 frames per second. Keep in mind that the 1700X CPU is holding us back a little bit, so I would fully expect to see a little bit more performance on a CPU that's just faster, you know, a core system that's just a little bit better. So after everything, the big question really is, do I think this is worth the hassle and the cost of replacing your stock cooler? The answer is going to be different for everyone. If your stock cooler broke or it just sucks, then yeah, you're probably going to want to spend 70 bucks and get cooling that's a little bit better than, you know, really good stock cooling like I had here on the Strix. But if you already have a really good stock cooler, then I wouldn't really do something like pay 70 or 80 bucks just to get a little bit better performance and go through the hassle of installing it. The real target for the G12 though is the techies who don't want to build a custom loop, but want to water cool their parts separately for a pretty darn good performance increase. But that is going to come at a substantial cost. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate everyone making it here. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. And if you made it this far and didn't enjoy the video, tell me why. No, honestly, I wanna know, love criticism. I wanna get better and make everything better. Um, started a Discord. So in the link, there's a link in the description down below. Go follow that, join it if you want. I'm still trying to figure out the whole Discord thing. I've already, you know, I'm under 100 subscribers right now. I've already had a big company, and I'm not going to say which one yet, but you'll see coming up soon. But they're sending me some really cool stuff so I can do a video on it. I just, it's surreal. I, how did I already, you know, get, uh, whatever. They enjoy the video as much as, you know, the few subscribers I have that keep coming back, which is just freaking awesome. Like, <laughs> you guys, I keep saying, yeah, you made it so fun, you made it so good. It's really amazing, and the the community is just so welcoming and, and helpful to each other. Maybe a couple bad eggs. Anyway, rambling, I'm just really, really excited, so keep an eye out for that. Um, and everything is just really great, so come join. Join our guild, and uh, we'll, we'll beat some bosses. Love you, nerds. If you want to talk to my face, add me on Facebook and Twitter. Join my Discord and come chat. And check out my other Dankalicious videos. Holla!